agenda. Um, so we'll start with a brief history, how we get here. Then we'll review what is in a bidding. We'll discuss opportunities and challenges of bidding. Then hybrid solution and best practices. We'll then introduce the level play, the island source in a bidding solution. And we'll finalize with a Q&A session. Uh, overall, it should take us about 30 minutes of uh, session and then running the Q&A part. So a brief history. Sorry. Yes. Um, so back in the days when everything just started, developers were start using a single demand source, meaning like a single SDK embedded into their application and started to generate revenue. Then in order to optimize clearly, in order to optimize and getting higher fill as well as more competition, they were like adding additional SDK sources into the project. Around let's say four to eight was somewhere around the, the number that is mostly common back then. That was also the time of the rise of the mediation platform, which helped optimize the setup. Clearly, in order to manage several demand sources, um, there was more monetization managers uh, uh, required, and the team of the monetization started to grow. Later on, in order to optimize the yield, networks and publishers started to work together in order to secure deals, right? We remember the day of like first, uh, uh, first place in the waterfall, second uh, place in the waterfall, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh, now you can also see me. Sorry for that. Um, so we're in the secure supply deals. So there are, we need like more operations in the sense that um, in order to set up the deals, there was an ongoing discussion with, between the publishers and the networks. Later on, about more or less two years ago. It was the rise of the tiered multiple instances based on CPM, which we like to refer as a semi bidding structure, meaning that in order to yield the best, developers starting to actually set up several instances with predefined CPMs for each of the networks, and then actually running a semi auction in the sense that like they were like asking for a certain network, are you willing to buy that specific impression for let's say very high value? And if no, okay, let's ask the uh, other demand source. No, then other demand source. Okay, now let's take the, the price down and down and down until someone is willing to take the ad actually for the, the highest price. Managing and optimizing such a structure is clearly have lots of work because with a decent portfolio, publisher found himself managing hundreds to thousands of instances, which is clearly lots of work to do. In the following diagram, I'm trying to explain, I hopefully quite good, the structure. So throughout the stages, we see that clearly the revenue increases from single demand source to multiple deals and then multiple instances. Every step in the way increase the yield. And it's clearly makes sense because because if that wasn't the case, then we would not see that step throughout the years. While on the operation side of things, we also see that each and every step in the way adds operations work, right? So if single SDK is almost you don't do nothing, but then when you have few, you need to start and optimize them and prioritize for each geo, et cetera, et cetera. Deals are clearly taking more time because you need to reach out to the networks, getting it back, maybe even signing a trot contracts, et cetera. In multiple instances, as we discussed, it's like hundreds and thousands of those which are setting up. So setting up is hard and clearly also optimized. Later on, we'll see how and if the future is bright. So what is in a bidding? Actually, it's kind of simple when you think of it as a holistic solution. So for each and the first step is clearly an ad request come. Now it's a mobile device. So there is a call between the mobile to the server. Now there is a real-time server-to-server auction being made between the auctioneer and the network server, which provide with a bid response at almost real time, meaning hundreds of milliseconds. Now we have few bids get in there into the auction. Now we also have a winner. It's a first price auction in most cases in most platforms. So it's the first is the first is the highest bid wins and also going to pay its bid. And then everything as we spoke is taking place in the server. Now there is a callback 
to the SDK, and then the ad is being loaded, and if there is a uh, request for impression, also impression. So kind of simple, right? Add request, auction, winner, getting served. But that's the ideal solution. And clearly, that's not how things are trending right now as of today, and we'll see it quickly. So what are the opportunities and challenges around uh, in a bidding? So clearly, it's maximum competition, right? So unlike a waterfall or even the multiple instances, in bidding for each and every impression, all the bidders, actually all the demand sources are being competing, which means that competition is the highest that you can get, which pushes the revenue to the maximum, which is amazing. It's also maximum automation, right? Because we don't need people to set up deals or to optimize the waterfall or to even like set up instances. Think about the setup process. It's, it's, it's very simple. You have, let's say, five, six, eight SDK that you're using. So once you're creating like a new app, you set those up and that's it. You don't need to do anything uh, uh, on top of that. And again, that's the ideal world. We'll get to reality in a second. Um, it also reduces latency. So clearly today with the multiple tiered instances waterfall, there need to go in an asynchronous request one after the other. And it, there is lots of latency with bidding. There is only single request. Auction takes place in the server, quite smooth, and then the end is ready. And that's clearly a dream come true. In that graph, I'm trying to explain the next steps. So as we discussed, the, and that, that's actually the opportunities um, coming into the world in a single diagram. So up until the multiple instances, the same diagram that we've reviewed earlier, but now there is the inability, right? So the revenue is, goes up, or the operations is dropping to almost nothing. Again, that's the ideal, but we need to keep in mind when we think on bidding, what we are aiming for. So there are also challenges. First and foremost, it's not directly related to publisher, but it's more of like what happens behind the scenes. So there's no industry standards, which, which is a, a big, big burden over the process. So if we remember in the, in the web industry, there was um, originally an uh, open RTB protocol that uh, took place and then everyone started using it and become a standard. And, Building a DSP, which later on integrated uh, into an exchange, was like barely easy because there was a single language based on OpenRTB that worked. In mobile, that's not the case. We had to have a standard uh, in the market, which actually means that every platform is building their own solution in a way, and every network that it would like to bid is also building some kind of an internal a endpoint which is based on the way to see it and also the caching logic in the, in the, in the device is not standardized, which clearly make the process much slower. Again, lack of standardization. Now, lack of knowledge, this is always with new technology, it's a, it's a thing and also with bidding, that's exactly why we are hosting that uh, webinar. Not everyone really understand what in a bidding try to solve, what should we expect from it, and what should be taken care of in order to optimize uh, the yield. And again, hopefully uh, by the end of this webinar, we will all be in a better state. And last and uh, maybe th the most important part, as of today, there are no so many bidders out there. And when I say bidder, I refer to tier one SDK networks that are right now fully supporting bidding. And again, at the moment, the market is kind of limited, which is for sure holding up the entire uh, a process and a implementation of the solution. Hopefully, later on 2020, we'll see a much better state. Because there are not so many bidders and the entire waterfall or the entire, sorry, the SDK demand sources are not supporting bidder, bidding. So we came up, not only iOS source, but other platforms as well, in the sense the market as a whole came up with a hybrid solution, which actually means that developers can utilize bidding on top of the traditional uh, mediation setup. 
we'll quickly review what's, a, what's that and then discuss the, maybe the most interesting part of this webinar, which is the best practice in the hybrid solution, which are going to, in a way, uh, use all of us in the near and maybe even far uh, time from now. So the hybrid solution, actually, it's, it's about the same uh, than the solution that we've reviewed earlier. Here I put it in a bit more of a details, although not on the platform are uh, supporting that in the same sense. So I'll start from the, the left, uh, the left high point. So we have the mediation initialization, then the networks which are bidding are initiated, then comes the add request. Then there is a client to server call. Now there is the server side open RTB based auction. Discussed that earlier in real time, there is a call, everyone is responding with a bid. Now there is the hybrid interesting part. There is actually a merge between the auction results and the waterfall, which, which get us with a winning array of sources, which are sent back to the client and then the winner ad is being cached and then there can be impression. Now here, in the way that uh, the waterfall and the bidding are being merged, there are different solutions out there between the mediation platform. Uh, later on in that presentation, I will review the ion source uh, level play solution with regard to how we optimize exactly that. So best practices for the hybrid waterfall. First, adapt all available strong bidders. There are not so many out there, but if you are going for a hybrid solution and if you are going for bidding, use them all. What strong is clearly a significant share of voice out of your performance. What is significant, that I will leave to you, but let's say it's not like 5%, right? So if there is a available bidding source out there, you should start to use it. Why? And of like many reasons, well, I've said that the number one for that is in order to, again, increase competition and get in a higher bid density. Higher bid density pushes the bidders to get to a better performance and then you can enjoy the yield. Again, higher competition, higher performance. Strong bidders can actually compete and get better and provide you with a better performance and also push other bidding sources to perform better and you can enjoy that. Number two, keep your current waterfall strategy for traditional instances. So let's say that right now you have a specific setup of let's say, I don't know, like 35, 40 different instances and now you're onboarding two, three new SDK to bidding. Now the question to try is what should you do with the current waterfall for the non-bidding sources? So our recommendation, keep it the way it is. I mean, keep your current strategy of optimization for the traditional instances the same way. Nothing actually changes. The bidding and the traditional are actually competing. So if the strategy that works for you is to start with a very high CPMs of, of instances, Keep it the way it is. If you are like very strong in optimizing the, the, the lower uh, points in the waterfall, keep it the way it is. Whatever works for you in full traditional multiple instances setup will keep and work for you uh, in a hybrid solution. Again, always think of the way you like to push for higher competition and higher competition mean like many prices in order to optimize the yield. Clearly, you don't need to have too much because you like to enjoy the fact that you can use bidding and then have less, less latency, etc. I'll review the related points in a second. So the third point, which is related, is to remove low share of voice demand sources. Either bidding or not, and that was all, always like a, my personal recommendation. Let's say that you have like, I don't know, like, 10 different networks, right? And let's say that two of them together are yielding very low share of voice. So what's good in it? You can say, hey, they, they are providing something, but maybe they're not. Why? Because they're adding latency. Clearly there are additional instances that in most cases will not result with an impression and do cost you um, with a latency. In addition to it, in addition to it, sorry, Clearly, in terms of operations, you need to manage the relationship, you need to make sure that everything is working, set up each and every new app, it takes time. And on top of that, you would like your strong players, your strong demand sources 
to to I'll say like to care about you, right? They you, you want them to put focus and their engines to try and optimize yield. In a sense, getting this let's say in my example five percent and take them away of this non-performing sources if you have those and give them to the performing demand sources may provide a better performance overall and uh, i'll get to how to do it in a second but that is, that was the recommendation since ever and it's also correct in inner bidding solution situation next one is to avoid manual override of the waterfall meaning keep your waterfall simple sorted by cpm a situation in which a, a lower cpm is placed on top of a higher cpm instance within the waterfall is very challenging for bidding and it will impact your performance make sure that when you are looking at the waterfall everything makes sense in the in the way that like high cpms are on top and then it's gradually going down think of it often actually as i mentioned earlier a semi auction you need to ask like do you want to pay a high number lower 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 etc while if you are not like 100 percent optimized meaning that some of the instances are adjusting their performance throughout time and it's not always exactly the, that cpm so if you, in the past in like 100 percent traditional instances it wouldn't affect you so much in bidding the effect may be fatal so like uh, fatal so bidding sources may not be able to actually work well and scale in your environment so keep things simple keep the waterfall sorted by cpm next one is focus on sdk demand sources so bidding may in the future open the door for non sdk traffic and which is also exists today while what we see from the data is of now with bidding specifically that sdks keep and perform better that actually means that while you can evaluate non-SDK sources, in most cases, again, what we see, that they will not perform so strong and SDK bidders are open for that. So same as uh, with the removal of share of voice demand sources, same here, our recommendation uh, was and remain, try and focus on SDK demand sources. Last, and maybe the most important is a b testing right so all of all of those points are there while being a best practices they are either more important or less important maybe not relevant for your specific case maybe a specific closure of voice demand sources it is adding some value so while try and follow those best practices and actually other um, ideas that you have make sure that you a b test every decision and every change that you made if it's like um changing the waterfall or re removing or even adding a strong bidder right a b test make sure that it works for you the best and you keep and improve now introducing a uh, level play hopefully you uh, you heard about it uh, already it's iron source in a bidding solution i tried to go for it uh, quite briefly um making sure we have enough time for q a so why level plate is the, is the right uh, is the right thing for you? So iron source we are as uh, Lauren explained earlier we're very much focusing into games uh, in mobile. That's why before we even release the level play solution, we make sure that there is an A/B testing capability attached. So actually A/B testing, and I'll, I'll show that quickly. There is a dedicated A/B testing module within the iron source platform. is part of, it's already embedded into level play, meaning that every decision every change that you think you you is good for you you may and can a b test full text ability so one of our focuses since the early days which remains in level play is text ability means that we like to call it internally like a, a client health meaning that we are making sure that everything that takes place in the sdk meaning within the app itself is optimized all the the learning curve that we had through the year for the smart caching and logic and making sure that there is no abuse of uh, videos being over cached in the um device itself everything is kept and is already embedded within the level play in order to optimize 
both performance as well as making sure that the user experience is well and the device are not abused with the wrong setup, as well as clearly optimizing performance. Then efficient hybrid solution. Starting from the design phase of level play, we under understood and our assumption was that pure bidding is far. It may be what we are all aiming for, but it's gonna take time. And time means maybe even years. So let's say a year or two, maybe even more than that, right? So the solution since the early day is based on a perception that hybrid solution is going to remain. There are, we are aware of like many solutions out there, while we believe that level play is optimized in the way that the, the hybrid solution is embedded, making sure that they, there is availability at all time with the highest price and uh, as soon as possible. So how level play works. So try to explain here in that uh, diagram uh, the, the different steps is, is more or less the same as explained earlier in the hybrid solution while in the more details. So the uh, request of an ad coming in from the device into the level play engine now, there is a bid request to different bidding sources. That's a server-to-server -server, um, action. And there is a bid respond into level play. On the right side, you can see the waterfall that is clearly also embedded into the level play setup. Now, actually, there is an auction and a merge between those. And now the bidding sources, as you can see on, on, on that slide, are being, being added into the waterfall. So this is the waterfall look at the right side um, without bidding sources and now within. The waterfall is being uh, sent back to the client and now a bidding source is being loaded and uh, shown. In that example, the bidding source won, but sometimes edge sources, meaning like instances which are not bidding, has a higher price. In that case, they will be loaded one after the other until an ad is being ready. Important to mention that traditional instances are not a 100% guaranteed field, right? So if you're looking at second ad source A with $11, that's an, a price for instance that is not a guaranteed field, unlike bidding sources, right? So if a network decided to respond with a bid and set up a price to it, that means that it guarantees to show an ad, right? So in that example, because the bidding source is number one, it for sure, pay that price for the ad, right? But if, again, that wasn't the place and let's say ad source A was, let's say, I don't know, like $20, we were requesting an ad, but it may say no, but then we are already ready in the client itself with the, the setup of a bidding source, which would then be loaded and uh, it has to get filled and pay the price. With uh, respect to the different modules, so we have the mediation management, uh, which was adjusted for, um, full transparency of the bidding performance. So you can see here on top of the waterfall setup, there is a bidding section with few metrics and also what we believe is very important in managing your bidding strategy, which is the share of voice of that bidding source out of your entire waterfall setup, right? So again, if you have a specific source that is a, a, have a very low share of wo voice, it's something that you need to check out. SDK network, so this is more of like the setup page. So as you can see here, it's going to be live in a, a early next year. There is a dedicated section to set up your uh, bidding instances. And for that, we're also a bit changing the reports in the sense that a network which is bidding is going to also be named as a, let's say for example, ad colony, so ad colony bidding. So you can differentiate also in the reporting from your bidding uh, revenue that comes from bidding. Cross promotion, which is a very excited feature that we've launched this year. Clearly cross promotion, uh, something that you all know about. I wouldn't uh, deep dive into the iOnSource unique cross promotion solution, which is actually a dedicated network uh, that works for you for your cross promotion activity and for the entire uh, portfolio. What, what's related to level play is the fact that you can and should utilize cross promotions through bidding mean that no more uh, requirement for setting up multiple instances and uh, place them in the waterfall. You can just 
activate that and then bidding will compete as part of the uh, cross motion will compete as part of the bidding uh, auction actually meaning again no operation costs on the supply side of things you only need to optimize your user acquisition activity for the cross motion so a b testing um again a full and state of the art and i believe that the leading a b testing solution out there um, I also was actually the first mediation platform to release that feature to the market and I'm really happy to see uh, the entire market speaking about A-B testing as a, a maybe even the, the best practice for monetization managers for as of today for optimizing their decision making which is uh, really like exciting because that wasn't the case um, up until uh, last year when we launched the product. Um, so again, you can launch, um, I wouldn't deep dive into A-B testing, but the important here is that you can launch every test that you want without R&D resources, right? So monetization manager, you can do it from your own computer, just log into the platform, set up everything, get it live, right? So you don't need to, to talk to your engineer, you don't need to launch a dedicated uh, version to the store. Everything is being managed and tracked and set up and optimized through the platform. You have like full reporting, um, module for that as well as the entire reporting modules that supports the um, AB data. So you can just go in, make the change, see what works for you and keep an iterate, make sure that you're always um, keeping progress towards the right way. With respect to the um, ad units and ad networks, so full video ads are being supported, meaning like both reward video and interstitial for both iOS and Android. The current live um, ad networks are Ed Colony, Tabjoy, and iOS Network. Again, all of them for reward video, social, iOS, and Android. And as we speak, we're working to onboard, to onboard additional uh, strong networks. And hopefully, um, in Q1, we'll find ourselves in with additional two to three um, strong demand sources as part of level pay. In terms of scale, so level play have been scaling pretty well and pretty quick throughout 2019. At the moment, we're sending it around 350 million impressions being auctioned in level play every day. That's a full video impression, right? So it's not like a, either like a banner or a native ad that you can see those being refreshed every second. We're talking here on only full screen videos either a word video or interstitial. So we got to the Q&A uh, section. I'll try to um, open your question here. 